Hey, we're stations. Will back uh, with some more rust. Uh, so let's do some rust today. Uh, today, what I'm going to dive into is uh, the traditional uh, programming challenge fizz buzz in rust, about four ways to do it. Maybe we'll call it three and a half. But uh, the idea for this came from this fantastic uh, blog post, a fizz buzzy tour of traits in rust um, that goes over actually a bunch of different ways to complete fizz buzz and that will really dive into idiomatic rust code it's written by josh uh mcguigan <coughs> Mc, <McGuigan. laughs> i think that's how you say it I'm, i apologize josh um so definitely check out this uh this blog post but uh this is going to be the basis for this video today um so here we go let's dive into some rust All right, folks, so I basically have this set up where I am, um, I just created a new file called fizzbuzz.rs. And again, um, if you are just in um, a program and you, a folder and you have Rust, uh, the Rust C compiler, uh, we are just going to compile, um, compile fizzbuzz.rs. And then what you can do is just after it's compiled, uh, you'll be able to just execute it uh, via the terminal and see that your program works. Uh, so let's dive in. We make a, a main function here. And I'm just gonna print line, just uh, <clears throat> actually, let's see, very legal, very legal and very cool. All right, so I just want to make sure that we are doing this correctly. We see that output at the end of these runs so that we know um, when things ended or not. So again, so I changed the file. So what I could do is compile it with Rust C and then I can exercise, um, execute it, see very legal and very cool. All right, so the first way to write fizzbuzz, again, so the, the basic challenge with fizzbuzz is uh, for all of the integers from one to 100, including 100, what you wanna do is if it's divisible by three, then um, if it's divisible by three and divisible by five, you write fizzbuzz. If it's divisible by three, it's fizz, and if it's divisible by five, it's buzz. So you might not, in a technical interview, you might not get the problem stated that way. Uh, they'll probably say if it's divisible by three, write fizz. If it's divisible by five, write buzz. If it's divisible by both, write fizz buzz. But, you know, this is the typical way that you would do this is to say, you know, you could, uh, you know, four, okay, so four, uh, one to a hundred, including a hundred, that's what the sequel is, sign is, and for Rust, uh, the U32 is the unsigned integer, so that's saying we don't need to consider negatives here, uh, keep it unsigned because, um, just to, to save space, uh, you could have a signed integer, I believe that's I32. <clears throat> if this wasn't wasn't correct, then um, then the Rust uh, compiler would yell at me, which it should do right now, uh, which is great. But uh, we're gonna save memory here by using uh, U32 unsigned. Then we create our. Uh, are variables and these don't need to be mutable uh, but if it's divisible by three so if the remainder when you divide the integer by three is zero that means it's divisible by three that's the definition of divisibility um, the remainder when you divide by five uh, equals zero then it's divisible by five so then you just print these lines and then you have already seen me run this but um, Basically, what am I doing here? 
<clears throat> compile and run. Uh, and it's all very legal and very cool. Okay, so that's the first way, traditional way that, um, you know, just as a first pass, you might write fizzbuzz. Uh, so let's get rid of that for a second. So that's a f perfectly legitimate way. It's just clunky. Uh, you have these dense control flow uh, statements that you don't want to, that, that kind of get in the way. They're kind of hard to write. If you get them wrong, then, you know, in something that's not as straightforward as FizzBuzz, then you could have a bad time. Uh, okay, so let's move our very legal and very cool. So the next way, and actually the way that most people, uh, Rust stations might want to write this and just get get it done with and, and move on for the day is to say, uh, again, same setup in the beginning here and same variables for divisibility, but you're going to use a match statement. And so um, this match statement is taking these inputs in divisible by three, divisible by five. And so if it's true and true, then it's fizzbuzz. If it's true and false, then it's fizz. False and true is buzz, and false and false is just the integer itself. Uh, you could also clean this up. Um, you could just do this. Play three. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> let's see if you could just make this this actually is I wouldn't prefer to see this if somebody did this in a in a code review I'd say this is um, not as clean as the other way okay we're gonna use the underscore here because it's literally anything else um, anything else is is false but if it's zero then it's true if there's no uh, remainder uh, then it's true but this isn't yeah this is this requires you to be a little bit more clever and uh, one thing I heard recently was you know if if you're too clever then um, you need to be that same level of clever when you uh, when you go and debug things so you don't want to have to be the same level of clever all the time <clears throat> okay, so let's see. I'm getting some issues. Unclosed delimiter. Okay, so let's see. Oh, here, I think I need the end of the program as well. <clears throat> What's great about Rust is that it gives you uh, a lot of... Um, a lot of insight into what's going on. So this did not print like I wanted it to. Uh -huh. Although it is very legal and very cool, I do not want to print that inside of a loop. And what I know, what's nice about Rust is that I know that uh, when it finishes compiling, if, if it compiled correctly, then it's something will run. It might not be exactly what you want, but it'll be something. Okay, so that's the second, the match statement. And, and folks will um, typically be satisfied with that, I think. Um, so those are, the first is, is a little bit clunky, perfectly legitimate. The second is uh, more straightforward. Again, prefer the more explicit instead of the sort of sh shortcut way. Okay, so now let's say that instead of this range that we're setting up, this, this for loop, what we're instead going to get in here is a vector. So you want a function that's going to take a vector of numbers and iterate over it. So we create this fizzbuzz vec. And again, this is Josh McGuigan's actually code. 
I'm following along with here um, of numbers. It's it's called numbers, but it's a vector of unsigned 32 uh, integers. And then again, run through that kind of similar logic. So uh, what this allows us to do is if uh, the interviewer gave you a little curveball and asked you to write a function that would take instead of the for loop the uh, uh, a vector this is how you could do it <clears throat> and of course all this function does because we need to pass uh, we need to actually call that function from within main so we will do that by declaring a vector um, we call it vex. So, okay, so let vex equals vec. Uh, let's see, I think it's vec <coughs> u32. It's going to be vec of the bang. One, okay, one, three, one, four, one, Okay, one, three, five, uh, nine, fifteen, uh, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, a hundred, and in the beginning here, let's just print the number. So we could see it. Okay, let's see. Did I mean? Oh, okay, so I think I need a semicolon at the end of that print line. Let's see, VEC 32, it does not like that. Okay, actually, with a vector, it looks like this is the syntax. Okay, and then here, the Rust uh, console is giving me a lot of information. It seems like it's yelling at me, but it's just trying to be my friend. Okay, so. Uh, this is fine. This looks right. Okay, now the final way that uh, I want to go over, although that blog post again goes into a bunch of different ways, is just modifying this so that um, instead of only a vector, you could also take an array if you needed to. So what this is is a function, fizzbuzz, that takes uh, the trait. So nums is going to be a trait where, um, well, we are using the trait from the standard library into, inter into iterator. We're going to turn all of the items in from A uh, into unsigned U32 um, values. So what this is going to allow us to do is take a vector or an array. So the caller of this could have a few different things and they won't have to go through the trouble of uh, modifying their input uh, to uh, to use what we have. Also with iterators, uh, what's nice about them, now I'm going to be careful here uh, because in Python iterators are lazy uh, so that they're really good feeding in. Um, they can process a ton of values very quickly without, uh, without crashing on like on like a list um, in Python. I believe that's the same in Rust, even though Rust is already blazingly fast. So what we could see from here is that if we call this with our VEC32, we should be able to uh, 
we should be able to get all the fizzbuzz that we want, but we also can call it with an array of U32 unsigned integers instead of this vector and also have it process. So let's uh, compile and see that uh, run. So let's see. Okay, so again, so what I want to actually do is show that, okay, so this new function can take either a vector or an array. It'll convert it into an integer, uh, into an iterator, uh, and that will allow us to, to get this done. If we use fizzbuzzvec instead of this new function fizzbuzz that converts to an iterator, uh, we're going to be fine for the first uh, for the first uh, for the first go around because this is a vector that we're passing in and it wants and expects a vector but if we change this now so that we try to have this buzz <coughs> fizz buzz vec uh, take an array what we're gonna have is the compiler yelling at us uh, that we can't do it but but the new fizz buzz function that converts from a to an iterator uh, will blaze through this just fine. So uh, fizzbuzz in Rust, uh, if you have an interview and you need to write fizzbuzz in Rust, there you go. Uh, but there are other deeper, more complex, complicated ways that get into more of the heart of Rust and traits. And I think we'll be going over them in another video uh, from that fantastic blog post, um, dive into it. But otherwise, we'll come back with other Rust stuff. Uh, I have this book, Rust, uh, Programming Rust, from Jim Blandy and Jason uh, Orendorf that I'd like to get into as well. So leave a comment, let me know what you think, and let's dive into more Rust.